So what are my favorite conversational hypnosis language patterns? I get this question a lot. I've mentioned on many videos about what they are. If I was to list my favorite conversation versus language patterns, here's what they would be. Get a notepad and pen. I'll go through these one by one. The first language pattern and my favorite is, what's the problem? And that's it. They're my language patterns. Realize this when it comes to language patterns. If you're telling a client, hey, close your eyes, go deeper. And with every breath, you'll go deeper as you start to drift. That's more the regular Ericksonian sort of monotonous language patterns that what? It becomes very obvious to a client that you're trying to do something. There's a big difference between a client going to a relaxation place, which is what language patterns do, compared to a therapeutic place. You get a relaxation trance and a therapeutic trance. I've talked about this in videos before. There's three types of trances. So my favorite language pattern is not a language pattern designed to relax a client. My favorite language pattern is designed to start the therapy. So when a client comes in, I say, what's the problem? I've started, that's my language pattern. It's no hypnotic language, it's no Ericksonian language. I've had people say, well, why don't you mix hypnosis inside that language pattern? You're defeating the purpose. I'm not trying to put a client into relaxation, which is what go deeper and breathe and all that sort of stuff does. Because I, I don't believe the whole idea that a client has to be relaxed in order to get access to their unconscious mind. It doesn't work like that. We've talked about that in other videos before. My language pattern is what's the problem? I want to know how do I start the therapy? Because that's what you're paying me for. The hypnosis stuff is a byproduct. I have to worry about that. Client says, well, I'm a smoker and I can't quit. My next language pattern is could be something like, well, what stops you from being able to quit? And the client's going to think, go, hmm, what are they doing? They're going into trance. They're looking, they're searching for the information. And yes, this is trance, guys. Thinking is trance. Where does a client's problem exist? The unconscious mind. Where does trance exist? The unconscious mind. So if a client's problems in the unconscious mind, ask them about their problem. Now they have to go into trance, which is how they created the problem in the first place, to find that information. Every time you take them in, they give you a response. They go back in based on the next question you have. They're fractionating, but I'm just not having to confuse it with language patterns and deepness and close your eyes and all that sort of long, more traditional, arduous stuff that's very obvious to clients. So language patterns could be, you know, what's the problem? Client says, I can't quit smoking. You say, well, you know, what's, you know, what's stopping you? Or how is that a problem? Why do you believe it's a problem? Any what, how, who, when, why question will do at this point. Client thinks and said, well, what stops me? Well, what's really stopping me is I can't find the motivation. Go, great. Okay. So what's wrong with the motivation that you have? You see what I'm doing there? These are my language patterns. I'm asking more questions about the problem they're having. These become my language patterns. What's unique here is because they're not hypnotic in nature, okay? Because they're not full of hypnotic language, they're not obvious. It means my client is gonna be more open to share information. Why? Because I'm not trying to do anything with these questions. I'm not trying to put them into a deep trance to show them, uh, to show off and show them how good I am at putting people in trance. Why? Because that starts resistance. And if your client stops opening up about their problem, it's because they're resisting you for some reason. It could be a belief. It could be something along the lines of, you know, I don't believe in this or this is going to be painful. I don't want to tell you all my secrets. When these things become um, part of your client's thinking, resistance goes up. But by simply doing, we call this a hypnotic interview and asking your clients about their problem, it doesn't sound like I'm doing it. It just sounds like I'm actually listening and engaging in, in the conversation. But me as a therapist, I'm actually doing a lot. I'm listening for unconscious moments. I'm listening for conscious conclusions. I'm listening for unconscious cues. I'm listening for the unconscious soul truth. These are all basically the same thing. But what I'm basically doing is twofold. I'm learning what is their conclusion? What is their conscious information? What can I ignore? And what are, is their unconscious information? That's the stuff I've got to pay attention to. Again, I'm going to go explain how that all works. We'll be here for hours doing that. We have live ACH trainings to show you how to do that. But that's what I mean about the language patterns, guys. So decide, what do you want to do? Do you want to learn language patterns to put a client deeper, which doesn't mean there's necessarily going to be a breakthrough? Or do you want to learn language patterns that have the essence of a breakthrough embedded inside those questions? My preferred language patterns is by doing the therapy, not worrying about the trance.